part two. Hang in there. My phone just blew off the fence post. Um, when you declare victory in your life, we're going to have to work on this. Maybe I'll bring on an elastic band to keep it up next time. But we're, we're going to get there. Hang on. We're going to just stay focused here. We're not going to give up in the day of battle, are we? So, then I'm not going to be a whole lot longer anyway. Um, we, but we've been talking about putting on that garment of praise. We've been talking about uh, uh, staying with God and believing God and standing with God and allowing Him to move in your life. Then I really love this scripture here in Psalm 146. It's getting harder to do. You guys all like these outside videos, but it's a lot harder than when I'm sitting in my kitchen. Um, it's in Psalms... Uh, uh, Sorry, 145, verse 14, it says, The Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who bow down. So when we talk about he gives you beauty for ashes, when we talk about he never promised you a rose garden, you've still got to move forward through that. You've still got to begin to say, okay, God didn't promise everything's going to be perfect, but look what he did promise. He said he upholds all who fall. So when I talked just moments ago before the phone fell, when I talked about how uh, we are to put on that garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When I spoke about that, we're to, to put on that robe of righteousness, if you would. Your head might have a hard time with that. You say, well, well me righteous. But God calls you righteous. So sort of the whole punchline of this entire sermon is, number one, God calls you well. He calls you whole. He calls you righteous. And because of that, we need to begin to get up off the couch, get ourselves out of that funk, put our boots on, put on that garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness, begin to dress the part, and then you know what? You begin to act and, and, and just sort of live a whole lot better. You actually feel better. You know, I remember, there's there's nothing worse. I remember years ago when I'd be haying all day long, and I, I can remember riding my bike uh, along. There was a quarry just, just down from where we lived, and I remember I couldn't wait to get off my bike and run down that hill and dive into that quarry. And when you'd get to the certain depth in the quarry, that water would be so cold, but it was so refreshing and then I'd come up out of the water and I'd feel all fresh and I'd go home and maybe have some supper or whatever but what was interesting though it was so refreshing when I began to get up and do something after a hard hard work that's sort of what we're supposed to do when situations come along when you lose a good cow maybe you've got you know you've had a situation come along you say well, this is far greater than a cow same word, same scripture, been around for a whole lot longer than you and I have. And it says, put on that garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness. Get yourself dressed. Get yourself up. Begin to see God pull you out of that hole. He'll leave the 99 just for you. Then notice it says, verse 14, the Lord upholds all who fall and he raises up all who are bowed down. Well, let's think about bowed down. It doesn't take, it take much of a preacher to think about what is bowed down, your situation. You know, you might be like that tree in the wintertime when they're all covered in ice and they're all bowing down. It almost feels like they're just about to break. But suddenly when that, that temperature warms up and the, and, the, and, and the ice begins to melt and the tree begins to stand back up again. So in your life, when situations have come along that you feel bowed down in your life, when you feel like, I don't know if I can figure out which end is up, all I'm telling you today is just like what I went through in a small piece of what I went through, I had to put on that garment of praise. I had to take that spirit of heaviness and say, I'm going to lay that down. I'm going to think about the other 15 cows. I, I think about all the other little lives that I have to help take care of. And when I begin to do that, I put my boots on. I begin to get up and get going. And in your life as a Christian, maybe there's been something that's caused you to be bowed down for too long. Maybe there's something that's caused you to be stuck for too long. Yes, you've never been promised a rose garden, but God did say, don't turn back <clears throat> in the day of battle. Those guys are always going to be remembered for turning back in the day of battle. But today, I just want to declare the word to you. God says, don't turn back. You can do this. You can move forward. I'm going to leave it there. I want to pray with you right now. Maybe you're watching this and you see... Uh, you know, Pastor, it's just been just been a real, real problem. There's been a rose garden that's just been nothing but thorns. And God wants to begin to bring you out. Amen? Father, I just pray for those right now, Lord, that feel like turning back in the day of battle. Lord, for those that 
feel like they're unworthy or, or somehow God doesn't want to work with them or in them or through them. And Lord, it starts with us repenting right now from those situations, those areas of our lives that separate us from you. But today, Lord, we receive your free gift of salvation. We receive what you're offering us today, and we do want to live for you. And I thank you, Lord, for everyone that is watching this today. I thank you, Father God, if you feel like turning back in the day of trouble or the day of battle. Lord, I thank you that you'll leave the 99 for us. And I thank you, Father, that we are going to begin to see big changes, big breakthrough, and better days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. I do apologize for two parts, but I kind of like, it's kind of like a series, eh? That's kind of neat. Anyway, have a wonderful week. We will fix this technical difficulty for next week. God bless.